All right, so I'm going to start with an anecdote um, that Martin offered at a poetry reading I attended about a dozen or a half dozen years ago. And I was thinking it was going to be a, a sort of uh, gem of an anecdote that would, that, would, um, that would sort of betray a lot of, a lot of uh, 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 relations and so forth that, that you know, could be um, uh, brought out of Martin's poetry. But he told the same anecdote today at, uh, at lunch. I've so got like one anecdote. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just start from there. About a half dozen years ago, at a poetry reading in New York City, Martin Corliss Smith offered an anecdote. He was reading from English fragments, and he mentioned that when he went to Chiswick, he often stayed with a woman who let in all kinds of stray cats, and these cats had a habit of peeing around the house. Martin said to her, you can't just let these cats inside and let them piss everywhere. And she shrugged, well, that's just what they do. He realized he was just pulling rank as a non-pissing cat. He was grateful for her presence in the world because of her, quote, indifference to the state of her carpet, unquote. And I want to linger on that image for a minute. A house with strays coming in to do what they do, a woman indifferent to the state of her carpet. I think it tells something of the traje trajectory and tendency of Martin Corliss Smith's approach to poetry that he offered this anecdote. He himself errantly strays to stay attentive to being, hence to dwelling, but such that he is purposefully indifferent to the state of his own carpet, if you will. For someone who's read uh, Corliss Smith's work, and I'm thinking back as far as his first book, Subpiscator and Complete Travels, it's clear that there are many things that could be said about his poetry, his innovation, his supreme control of lyricism, his exploration of worlds known and unknown. But when I read his poetry, it is not these gifts that strike me the most. What strikes me is an investigation of the self accompanied by resistance to self-flattery, self-idealization, and self-applause. He maintains this most surprisingly without falling into a, a, a position of puritanical or Calvinist self-obliteration. There's a strangeness to the work that is at once common and international, preserving the foreignness of Englishness even from itself. It is a poetry hostile to, but that's not the right word. And I, and I say it only to point out its wrongness, because it is not a hostile poetry. It is a poetry hostile to the embarrassment of self-disgust, self-disgust that often wishes itself burned up and burned clean. This self-disgust can easily fold into disgust at the, at the world. Self-castigation can easily slip into to neglect of the pain of others. Corliss Smith's refusal of that embarrassment a refusal to maintain or even imagine a potentially dangerous or violent sanitization may be one of his more astonishing gifts. There's a short poem from Herrick that reads, and I should say Martin sent this to me um, at a point uh, of great need for myself. Um, a, a short poem from Herrick that reads, Here we all are by day, by night we are hurled by dreams, each into a several world. It is in that several world, the multitude, that is not the one. And I want to say that again, the multitude that is not the one, that we find Corliss Smith's attention. What he says in Bitter Green is, quote, a matter of scale in which I marked the low point, and the distant clouds indicated something of the measure of the necessary escape, grand and immortal seeming, natural and ignorant. Please join me in welcoming Martin Corliss Smith. Ah, thank you for coming. Um, and I, I, I think that I was tasked with reading most of Bitter Green, and I think that's probably what I intend to do. Um, it just seems rather straightforward. I haven't made a selection from it, so I better just read it. Um, I don't think it's very long. It's certainly small um, in terms of size. So I, I, if I feel like it's getting on too long or I'm sick of it, I'll skip ahead. Um, and um, I should say just briefly that the book started out as a sort of an antidote to some of the longer um, investigations and books that I, they were just sort of these exhausting books that I kept writing and I was sort of, fuck it, I need to just write some lyric poems and live a little. Um, so I wanted some lyrics, this sort of, um, and I started writing love poems because I was in a chaotic love affair that was 
taking up everything. And then my mother died. Another another love affair, and so the book sort of derailed. Um, so perhaps that's the trajectory of the book: the chaos of a love affair, and then an awareness of um, something else. So I, I, I think um, I I'll do my best to read. Some of the poems are not very very easy for me to read, and so you know, yeah, I won't. I don't want to perform my sadness, but there may be some sadness. And there we are. Um, Ouvria, Ouvria, the nightingale. How has it come to this? Love is a severed foot, cattled in the guts, a trifle flipped. Love is a tree of apricots, all rotted. I can see it breathe, I think. How has it come to this? The fruit, my bliss disdained, a trifle shattered in the breeze. The thistle looking over fields. Do not forget the instant of its pink fouillard. Late in the afternoon when a single look from her lifted the torment for a while. When vice may move before all reckoning my sense. These are the phantoms with obscene nicknames that outside life is made profane. And I have written my own curse for other mouths and mine. Presence. A mild and moony interlude. Happy when alone and not myself. My knowledge of the world is from the world. The reality of the present consists in the absence of a qualifying prefix. The pastness of an event is not the same thing as the event itself lying dead in the kitchen, out of place. Is your hope in retreat, falling to shadows? The last is the song of an exile. When I first lost hold of the thought, for a while I still imagined that I might regain it at any instant. What happens to the light inside you? When you love, perhaps an equilibrium of exchange. When you're not around, I forget what I might mean to you. You might notice a detail like the trouser leg pulled away from a shin. Perhaps the book will be understood. That which is other, of course, remains always other. Unknown, bring your hands together in prayer or applause. Snowing at night, deep green. Ice-cold feet of a statue. Human-skinned flowers, carnations, white poppies. The boat, the book, the milky, eyeless ocean. A decaying whale blossoms into rainbows. Fish in great society, ignorant of land. The mouth on both sides of the body sack. If you were to focus on nativity, mor mortality, change, I shall never have done seeing myself in the past. Orpheus in the forest, anon among the dolphins. Happily together in an untidy little sitting room called Confusion Hall. I have no idea what I've written. The severed foot in my stomach is love. We estimate the distance between soldiers. Wednesday, the upper world was utterly bereft. They simply slowly pushed her towards the door. The most important nouns filled with images of the deceased. Strange piping voices one could not quite make out. We see with one eye and stand upon one leg. Whispering, push the glass aside. Three bodies hung with clothes. All this time, a boat drifting somewhere on the green. A note on absence. The story over, having wished it otherwise. The water surface, friendship. The drunk, euphoric. Good Friday music. Not in this lifetime. A fig tree grows. No miserable deed will do. Space and time, dimensions that just bring more of this for anyone who has a nose. Show gratitude. A king sat in a box. 8 p.m. Friday, rain defeating snow. A space too narrow to pass through. A gannet through the oil cannot, and a linnet sons a song. The winter is of every count, the water without ground. 
a fast returning past that halts the future in her backwards glance, where through a dark gulf I have found you in your absence, always one last breath through fire without air and earth, forever bitten through my hand. Nothing has transcended death. This is the year it isn't or it's not. Assertion of material, a, de a dedication hopeful of eternity or immortality, emptiness in harbours all. Descending on a hill in York, a Worcester market, or the library in Oxfordshire, nothing has transmuted emptiness, nothing has transcended death, a fee paid to a clergyman, all words lacking identity, affirming only their obscurity. Nothing has obliterated God, nothing has replaced the earth, nothing now deserves the empty dead. Nothing can unearth our buried hopes. Nothing transfigures eternal woe. The nothing we have found as fundamental to our consciousness and soul. The idle body settles after war. Slowly, the giant corpse, supported by its bulk, gives way to soft completion, emptying ambition through its chime, milk and bile, seeping to the river source, until the insignificant, unheralded, takes witless hold of everything again and change the servant of obscurity again and nothing has transcended death. Hope is a flower, change is a gardener, death is the soil. Hope is irregular, death is essential, change carries all. Greed is the flower pressed, self is the garden wall, nothing with nothing built around. Poetry is apocryphal. The moon which over winds must travel, hard by the warning clouds and shadows, darling morn will come again and fields that grow into their green. Fit with retro furniture, our love and acts a ritual, and we are resolute, our parts, well-written futures we rehearse. A fawn undone by lust, the comedy of love and wanting to remain intact despite his non-existence. London, in the Hampstead Ponds, a green walk without sides. The Chiswick Garden. The cherries overripe and vile, rotted together, wasp eaten. Rye Harbour. A murky, shelving sea recedes, green on the pitch, lavender in grey. We could have made it here yesterday, but instead we came today. Suddenly the sun, a stretch limon, under the ice my lover comes, under the carriage door, a soap cart foaming in the rain, all these black olives on the floor. Virtuous or not, men pass away, and souls may whisper as they go, and some are friends who say kind words, and some deserve it so. His, her father, the doctor, happier at home, the oval window where the script is read, Give this note to Molly in the garden, for we cannot want for fantasy. In a realm where nothing in the way of real is to be found, a motherless daughter in a gown of green, I do not so, I read. Late of the Moscow poems, her revolutionary boyfriend says, Silence! The crow reckons in its comic attire you walk like an asshole. Old man, I'm so tired before I'm even born. The sun can't make it this winter. We'll have to make do with this bucket and a bottle of vodka. You say you are unhappy. Well, what would happiness be? You seem to enjoy it, whatever it is, and your pants are tight and you get fucked. The cloud wilts past my door, and again the light returns, opens like a fridge I'm in. I have finished a moment more lasting than bronze. A fresh nothing held up to the face of Boreas. When I look for myself, I'm not even there. Everything has escaped through the fingers of my goddess. The steps built up above the peasant slope, from which we hear the clamour of our poem, the unheard bleat of the sacrificial goat, the unheeding beauty of a stranger passing to his former lover. Venus's muscles, sorry, Venus's blue muscles under her uniform, the crevice filled by the usual device. I can find no kinder way of saying it. She is without restraint or taste in matters of the flesh. Sleep arrives with a lopsided smile. 
How can the tongue keep still at times like these? The legs and arms recall all former deeds. I am nowhere to be seen. She is a brazen treasure that has buried me. I am a fool whose gold was never pure. Now with the chance to shore my stocks, I see our meeting was the last time I had love for me. I remember staying with Theobald, who was proof that an excellent constitution is no match for a prolonged course of overfeeding. Who can love any man whose liver is out of order and imagines himself wanting of an affectionate family? He was a man on the verge of the greatest excitement, the galloping hooves. She weeps at the table in distress. Even the green is raw. The red field keels over. If I could hide inside your pain with you, also the red wet tide that keeps me feeling you no longer ever real. A beautiful young woman is unfaithful to herself. Hungry with loss of her, the heaviest empty bag, her loss and what to act upon. The bruise blooms purple and yellow like the face of a pansy, a weak old flower. A pig brought into slaughter. Zeus's daughter lost inside a dream, the summer that enwraps her shoulders. Bare now is the hour of our need. The moon, it doesn't even look round, not real at all, but flat and metal like a tin di dish driven over in the street, like a foiled dish driven over in the street. I love you, moon, you are everything to me. As I was being questioned at the checkpoint, I saw what I thought was more running on the mountainside. Me and my small transgression about to be punished, and more naked and alive with independence, dancing beyond anybody else's claims. The wash house overwhelmed by sour lips, the workhorse dragged by ropes across the ground. It's my poem, not yours. There's this hero, a glass, a grass plot and dimensions, I'm exhausted. The shepherd with his goat skin wakes empty in the sun, my mouth dried crisp opens a future drinks on. The shape of the shirt, a man who likes his lilies, sulfuric acid, a poet's habit, a nurse's tit held out of reach, an inch is infinite. This is a burn right through. How far are the birds? Not far. Nothing can leave us. Nothing leaves us. And here in my wagon we hear birds. It is a thrush this instant everywhere. Some undergraduate wearing that scent you wore when we met. What was lost? The taller weeds. Rose of Chiron. Glow, Lord Glorious in a fell instance, gravity and her smiling swooned. I will come at last to rest. Still no privacy. The teeth of blood my mother gave to me, her apron of bleach and arms of beef and scent of hair and golden yeast. To stop, you cannot stop until you rest. Slight as the ash tree bough, twelve of them in the chill, glint quite still and white, then black against the snow. A mouthful of earth awaits us all, whether by fire or fall, a mouthful of dirt, our final word. Your brown eyes looked so fond of me, but I cannot be seen where I now stay. They had gold warmth, but ringed with blue, a glow, then sometimes cold outside. I wanted you all through these years, but you weren't mine, nor never were. And I could never hope to hold that golden warmth all ringed with blue. A watercolour of a fish. Its deep blue greenish fin and watery eye, a jewel and red blood round the gills. I made this for you, thinking nothing of its life, just of the colours on its side, its obsolete candescent pride. Weeping and weep no more, all takes just a moment. Laughing, laugh no more, this day is passing. Living and no more, my heart be constant. Dying and no more to hold, I cannot. 
Let death her song console with nothingness our lives lived in her shade soul with her momentary flare escapes our crushing want our arms which are defenseless each to each reaching after that which is its loss the dead woman that is living here dead in their cars the dead arriving home if i were if it were easier to live we would all live but to keep an open face only a few and now some dead what can i carry across to you my pity or should i take yours love which i hold on to as if it's nothing is nothing i mean it is not anything narcissus with no mirror the child without his mother what should i bring to you it will not be pity or our love which i can't find without you i must bring my general humanity a dull brute beast who eats and shits seems happy without content or the ability to reflect upon loss as love's reflection hunkered down over bleach floors and tiles and chicken rinds prone to bursts of varicose and valium and anodynes the brightest carver queen whose valley echoed with the screams of little trembling narcissi plucked into a beaker for a sunday offering the small house i grew up in but still its hidden spots concealed in dreams and silences between inside of me the ceaseless ground erupting into being my mother i had thought but no maybe even blood a little the stars a cloudy night i had high hopes but no now not for her a leaf blows heads or tails the long noon of the city honeyed oxford and the bones of york where nothing can be done on busley the elms tower upside down around the black fish pool the battle of britain cathy's garden oxford ohio 2011 the arbor of the garden fringe the complex branches of the upper reaches in between the skies like some brittle fossil of a living lung the spicules fracture as the groaning fighter crashes clumsily to earth an old man with a lion's head the process of his changing shape how strange to die how ordinary and wonderful it was the best thing after all slow drips and light shower flat metallic sky and somber limbs dear as if on set appear and then it is again as it had been the rain set in if constant motion and emotion can be set i have regrets exhilarating endless rain whether i go out or settle in a flash of silver tears the curtain I'm loving her in knots I can't untangle night as if inevitable you cannot see yourself as separate to it and then the afternoon incessant bird whose song doesn't progress a two note threnody so when I close my eyes to my own thoughts I should have ownership in some small part I am enslaved to that which I give up my selfhood for it is not even her she is not anywhere both victims of the same hypnotic song two notes a threnody to morning and to afternoon two infinitudes my small distempered craft a house upon an ocean set or else a bird caught in a net without bastion drunk writerless despised as if the next inaccurate desire of fulfilled will will offer surety a hill fort derelict decapitates the camp i had emptied i had ended up leaving the ground for no particular reason wanting only everything the most beautiful universe of sun eclipsed by heaviness hey come hither child hey i've just emptied all your fears into the world i did thick may rain and thunder on a sunday would be august lowering trees in lushest greens then bright again to end an english post meridian the shuttered room in sunken darks my erection typical of the genre blood and wine carpet to ceiling darling in another room i'm gone fantasia on loss we certainly got the white right, right weather for this book at the moment i think <sighs> sorry fantasia on loss 
I saw a tree felled by the bank and thought it was a desperate fool. The saddest hunched without concern for loss had humbled loss. Love carried her own cares busy between mismatched contemporaries. A child's scarf worn by a teenage girl it is too late to meet. Child is a cavern of despair where light is now uncertain. Night is your companion. Take your jacket, pen in pocket like a park thrown around a closet. I crawled inside your face. I cannot mean that, and I do. I crawled inside of you to be there, and I could not hold the view. Who are we against the sightless faces of the dead, our populated depths? All but the flowers and the birds are hindered here. Under what spectacle of light the crowds, invisible and visible, as if amongst contemporaries, wander to or resolve to stand between the instances of rose and wall? Light through the leaves or amber evening light, light from the graves of others who have seen the days of happiness and sorrow fluctuate like light. My day at tremble on the flat plain window who can or never has seen anything of this. Her idle attitude of thought, her actions, I have tried to keep things innocent of hate and need, and hate and need have grown immediate. What I want, I don't know how to tell even myself, except it is not what I get, not even that. All summer long, the weeks fell apart like legs, and each boy took his turn with the indifferent summer in a ruin of sacrifice and sick astonishment. At last the last door of the adult house was opened, at last the great whore of the town was naked there for them. The muses have been here all morning, a wren, a swallow and a robin. I have been confounded with my self-regard and anxious over family and business of the world. I take no part in my success or in my son's near happiness. I am confounded here in self-regard, until a wren, some swallows, and a robin called. The world scatters absence on my claim to memory, a model of a puppet ship which placed upon a painted sea as if mid-journey in a bottle empty of its spirits, now all we have to show for one long summer and forgetting all of it. Every time I near myself, a death forestalls me, Knowledge, such as night, makes wisdom's vision faint. Only a planet seems the envy of her siblings in a sky of doubt. Struggling to keep afloat, as when a poem moves beyond its words, the trawler moves over depths into a realm impossible to read. The skiff emblazoned by the sun on scattered gold and albumum, arriving at what leaves, what flowers, Venus the morning star, Venus the evening rose. A modest Turk fell off the sky. A big top tent and trapeze act. What then is love, if I am either cognizant or else consumed? The light like breathing it will change. For love has fallen like a misery upon the day, and I remember wanting this, defenceless woods engulfed by waves. Droitwich, late July 2011. The fruit trees are in fruit, and none should doubt that this is summer once again, a cloud, cold sky, but greens abound, the garden pushed to the limits of its growth. I am here again returned to the very dwelling of my birth, and those two souls still here, and captive to their own despair and joys, and me away now, in some absent state I hardly know. The unused shed takes only months to rot with bindweed, nettle halo overlooking poles of blistered creosote. I'm stewed under sun, every graffitied inch, railway brick and fox piss path, children in the psychodramas of their games, a newt among detritus in a sink. Out of the corner of my eye, my mother passes into the undergrowth, ignored, of common evening primrose, bitter cress and flax. Sweet of rain and light, London, August 2011.
This rain will rot your house. This is the denouement we've been playing out. The light she gave me, her last light, that day of endless rain. The light which I still see, all silver down the train window. My son, a silent travelling companion. In this light, London is intoxicating. The light in London is intoxicating. The chivalry of war, significant extravagance in plumes of smoke and feathers, rows of terrace houses such as Battersea and Hove. The sea deposit of a decorous embattled state, all parks that close at dusk when feral gangs of youth might chase an innocent to death for want of ritual. This is the side of the house which fell down. This was the site where the pit grew. She fell without a word, a gasp of this wall. Down from the north to sit and watch the water when a life might any moment out burst of violins to kiss most lustily the gut and bow. It is the ripped apart, her heart which here in my hands, my heart, or is it shoulder where I love the weight, the heads held up. When I say she left her vanity behind, I just mean her mirror. Do not suppose those things that you feel keenly are yourself any more than those that leave you speechless, dry and without incident. Death, 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 follow it four times back until you understand the lady smells of laundry whom I love. A thousand lines all hung I have pulled down. The bride asks of the common creatures, who was it in passing that bestowed such beauty upon you? Who is not devastated by this clamour? Where is your hiding and your hunting? Where are you as you sit, invisible in the tall grass? I have touched the squalor and the splendour of myself and laid down tortured and in bliss. I have held myself to standards not my own and lost all sense of common ground. A living form, why grieve, as if usurped by death, until the furthest edge leaves one thin task left? A suite of mirrors. We're well through this now. I feel like this can happen without too much damage to anyone. A suite of mirrors, two swan that in attendance stand, offering a sign of fortitude. Why I have chosen neither company nor solitude, I cannot say. My head is woozy with the infinite, and so I sleep heaped like a sideways sack upon a sofa that would fall if it were not for the meagre floor I rent. Beneath these trees love slept, not dead, but idle in her bliss, and these same trees have left their leaves and shadows in their breath. Oblivion plays in the foliage, one bright instant in its shade. Suns into being fall and rise, and more suns in amidst the greys. You loved this house, you said, and I recall these walls as if my brother's face, but houses are immune to tenderness, without a human to inhabit them. The windows are as blind as glass. And words like love that move the air like motes are even more useless. Remote oblivion dressed motherhood with love and made the lover smile when you embrace. But memory in search of consolation after loss could only conjure masks and not one face. Catharsis pruned to self-involved avoidance. Whatever she was made of, she's gone and I am left at least with knowing that she was real, for now I cannot conjure anyone. My faith was not by faithfulness supplied. I had my love of those whose constance was in doubt, by also those whose love could not be tried and both gave out. Needs must that I retreat from your opacity, for looking on you turns me too much on myself. And having want of love, I gave that love to you, and giving all left nothing to receive. What is this cat catastrophic love that just one glance, one second past, has pushed me to the end of breath? Death is all it brings, the absolute undoing of a life, a precipice. But life was just display. 
a chance occurrence that might once or twice allow significance to coincide with incident. And so I met you and you left. With each new self, one learns how to be another lover than the one one knew. So loving leaves behind what we once were and finding more within when without knew. That which I now see clearly was unclear. That which I saw, I no now longer see. As if what was a mirror darkly glazed, now washed of all its selfish gloom, reveals a window to the world. And all it holds, the light from where I sit redoubled is, and now unfogged the glass transparency shows more of me than I held in my haze. That which I held in vanity, which was concealed by one small mirror, opens now the field. To Jean, I wish you a heaven of privet scent, of every child you ever held, of evening light and endless dance, of years of hours spent. I'm sorry to report that all is emptiness. One might abandon hope at such a thought, or else one might choose self-abandonment. I prefer to carry on in this formless eternity and reach into the abyss to make another cup of tea. That's my English poem. <laughs> I'm sorry, a folly. Keats in a purple shirt, Shelley in a yellow. The afternoon upon us after play, the wine and fruit left over from tomorrow. Daughter in my arms for one more night, as lovers we shall dance outside the hall and up against the car park wall, we might admit each other's needs before we part. On leaving my mother at cruise station. The bow the bird is on, a bitter winter dialect, writ gray across the white, somewhere in the copse is green, Somewhere underneath this scene, a summer stirs a spring. I've been through so many winters, we'll never see the like again. As with an apple for dessert, its ordinariness sublime. I'm at a loss this day to find another winter equal in my mind. To make ill of the good, what help to any man to take a blossom down to choke a chick in milk? A small hand motherly falls, a frail papered mitten that holds its pair, a tremble in spasm that cannot write, auspicious and empty with each minute shared. There's nothing like a mother's glove or hand there on my arm, taking the bus with two of us kicking against the seat in front, the other children remain other to my small idea of family or world. What a damn fool it is to love and not to love, or else a starling holds us captive with her song, with her lament, her joy, her consonants. Play for her tonight, she cannot hear. I noticed your mouth was the pit of death, an intimate space and infinite, your eyes one last time to let in light or let out something silent and unseen. Your mouth that forgot and became the grave, like a shadow closed and ever growing. In the dark. In the dark throated rattle of the night, in the mindless pain, in the tamp down hair, in the rolling eyes, in the gasps and days, she takes no consolation, primeval loneliness, first and awful mother, earth and night. Dusk has fallen right through the ground, to the woman in whose ivy-clad realm I may dwell. Piss of apples on the lawn, birds of dusk, the robin and the tit. There is nothing left. The gardener came in and cleared the lot. So tired that I cannot raise my head to see who sings, calling unseen between the trees. It would be mother I would first call out, a church or island. Now rain is you. Did you know as you died, indivisible, insoluble death? under the myrtles and 
Under the myrtles and the yews, under the changeless yews and bitter asphodel, under the privet and the haw, nothing out of which a tree has grown. After the moment of release, immediate the fall of intimate opacity, where blood like a word spent from the mouth, her tongue was bloody as she died. Amidst the brown fir needles and the new heaped soil, a whisper of a breeze that might disturb the field, a word we listened for as if a word held breath. I have somewhere in a sequence of vain chemistries, knowing the ground of love to be an absent mother in a winterhood of light. This room was a railway station, this bled replaced the bled where John Keats died. When her teeth bit down on agony, was not the bliss of sat satiety alone. The world will fall untidily to earth, for what it's worth the self will settle wholly on the flesh. Night will fit exactly into day. The makeup bag she brought was buried with her body. An invincible sadness since first light, wanting to leave the earth for even one instant, to enter into a realm where the self cannot follow, the flat world turned hollow, a place at last the self cannot be found, walked into the house and found a doorless corridor now ran right through the middle of the house. There's a fucking monkey grin, a TV show, a human being, a letter written and unsent, a cheerio, a child in the next room, a window open and the view she cannot see, a wax doll and a crimson mouth, dead mother with her toy. Up it flies to death, and off it swims to death, and here the door opens to death, and in the air today the clear voice of a living death, alone in groups of company, the geese return. We went for lunch, for Stroganoff the day she struggled for one breath, I needed her to die as I had booked my flight. I kept walking past people as your son, in mourning with my head on backwards, overgrown along the ground, dressed in a rented suit. The green nerve-rooted trees, bits of church seen through the leaves, three men apart in black, depart across the lawn, those who come forth to cast dirt forever, those self-elected out of love and theatre, those in whose silence offer her last word. A broken-throated pigeon in the yew, a song tuned to the Mulvans without view, perhaps to see the room die instantly, perhaps to see her whole family die. Another garden, under drought, a stream, run out of rain, end of terrace, end of evening. She died inside her mouth. I fed her little bird, breathing through the grate, milk all down her cheek, dredging for one breath to mean a final thing, the desert of her mouth, the elms breathing, the light, the leaves, the brightest green, the blood leaving her face, the world leaving her mouth. Um, and then there's a coda. Luna e l'altra. The one and the other. And now the reflection of the dark house is as real and permanent as the house itself. The moon in the pond, or say the shadow of the statue. Apollo in his golden pomp. The matter of her will no longer matters. Darling, I say, stepping out into the dark, knowing you are not there and cannot hear me. Darling, how can we go on staring at some great uncanny tree? A voice which comes back to me. How can we go on? How can we go on? What great matter are we in all this darkness? And the voice again, this darkness. And that icy shard will twist so that I must stay outside alone with my pint of wine and with the hope that the wind in the pines distracts me from the moon's echoes, the psychomantium. At her core, there was either a cold rock or a creature terrified and hidden. A moon blooms back at the sun, incandescent, mordant, reclusive in the open. A young woman trembling in her shoddy life, her mind a moon in retrograde, he is terribly conscious of daily life. His flight to the moon is in sheer desperation. He sees the absurdity of his situation reflected in the moon's dispassionate gaze. The moon is magnified at night. His anxieties, both quite stubborn, both real, nothing to be done with either. 
The way one lives, a pile of clothes and an unanswered letter, company kept with the small-minded and disillusioned. Whether light or sound, whether the moon or the robin, those emotions I am feeling, they are made of blood. The moon, then, her effect upon the internal and external oceans, a lonely dream in a medieval dark. If death was the great fear, the eternal enemy, then life was the great gift, the cherished possession, but life was nothing, historically bestowed on the ignorant and unworthy, and those making a success of this little game, they were not marked by a devotion to decency or signalled intelligence or bravery. And what death promised was an end to all the ignoble and squalid concerns. It was a matter of scale in which I marked the low point and the distant clouds indicated something of the measure of the necessary escape, grand and immortal seeming, natural and ignorant. Today the clouds in dark coils seem to hint at an inferno just beyond the horizon, a lake of flame, a lava flow, an approaching army clad in bronze and gold. Thank you. It's a bit dark, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I ruined it. She dies in the end. <laughs> No, it's sort of, yes, I mean, it started out not, I mean, I thought it was going to be um, light lyrics about, you know, I was thinking of Herrick. Spinoza. Yes, Spinoza. Yes, lovely Spinoza and his sensible materialism. What do we do now? What's happening? <laughs> Okay, so I'm done. I can shut up. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks for coming, everyone.